44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. I'm just counting to practice how to count. Uh, actually, I was waiting for the uh, Twitch, uh, Twitch to say that I'm live, so uh, welcome to the stream. Um, we're not going to really start off with this today. We're mostly going to focus on Jovian lunar eclipses again, and I'll explain why uh, in just a minute. Um, interestingly, now I've, I've you know um, no one watches these live streams. I'm going to check. There's no one in chat. There's no. There probably will be almost no one in chat for the entire stream, and there never is. Um, so uh, to make myself feel a little bit more bad, I want to announce the stream in certain places, and still have no no users. It, basically, to show that. My streams are so bad that people don't watch them even, you know, even with advertising. So I did ask Stack Exchange if it's okay to post a, a, a link uh, to my stream if I'm live streaming the answer to a question, which which we are doing today. Um, so far, uh, the question itself has been downvoted by one, um, and the general consensus here seems to be don't do it. Um, th although some people disagree. Um, so anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. So we will uh, now go back to README Stream, which I have edited for today. So we're going to look at the question that um, that actually basically um, is we're going to look at today. That, that was redundant for those of you who uh, caught it. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so the question this guy asks is, how long do solar eclipses last on Metis? Uh, and a solar eclipse... Um, now this is, you know, we, we said it's lunar eclipses, but of course, if the, there's a total solar eclipse on all of Metis, which I don't know how to pronounce, by the way, um, then it does mean there's going to be a lunar eclipse as viewed from Jupiter. So this is really the same question uh, we answered earlier about, uh, about Jovian lunar eclipses. And it would be nice if we could link that. Uh, I'll make a note to link that later. Um, so I'll put a to-do here other Jovian lunar eclipses question, which we still haven't answered, by the way, although we have answered it on the stream. So we found out for the uh, four primary Galilean moons, uh, you can compute Jovian lunar eclipses easily in the sense of not compute, but someone's already worked them out because people do watch those large moons uh, quite a bit, and then they watch to see when they go into shadow of Jupiter, which is the same thing as a lunar eclipse. Um, so that was an easy question, and I did make some sort of offhanded comment that no one cares about Jupiter's other moons. Well, uh, obviously this guy does. I don't know if it's the same guy. Um, I'm not sure what it is, actually. Heldener. By the way, we're all going to see some of these pop-ups coming in because I asked a very uh, extreme question. I'm going to check them because I, not because it helps you, because it, cause I want to. Um, Keep in mind, comments are only meant to ask for clarification or points. So this is actually someone commenting on something else. I'm gonna have to look at that post I in more detail when we're when we're done here or something. Or I might just live stream my answer to whether I can live stream. That would be pretty meta. But for right now, let's focus on this question. Okay, so so the uh, the correct way, of course, to deal with problems is to work on them, uh, research them, and solve them. But the much easier way is to just ignore them, and that's what we're gonna look into. Uh, today, and I'm going to actually, I'm so happy about it, I'm going to write it up as a little note here, uh, is good. Ignore your problems is good. And so what, what we what we found out when we were looking at uh, Jovian lunar eclipses for the four Galilean moons, uh, the problem is that uh, you know, C-SPICE will easily compute, not easily, it'll compute, whether or not the uh, center of, of Io is eclipsed by Jupiter or not. Um, and uh, it'll be the same for any of the other Galilean moons or pretty much anything else we ask it to do. The problem is, you know, except for, I think I made the hobbits joke already, no one really lives, uh, you know, maybe no one lives, so who knows, maybe someone does live at the center. But the, the, the question that's being asked is, if you were on the surface of one of these moons, would you see an eclipse? That's a different question. And what we discovered is it's quite possible to have a portion of the, um, of the, of the surface eclipsed without eclipse in the center, because the uh, umbral cone doesn't uh, doesn't touch the center, it's um, also possible to have the um, center eclipsed and not the entire planet, and not the entire moon or whatever it is we're looking at. Uh, uh, so, so there is there's some correspondence there as we discussed previously. If the center is eclipsed, there's necessarily a partial eclipse somewhere on the surface of the planet or object. Um, but that's the only sort of solid statement we can make. We can't say there's a total eclipse, and we can't say that if there is a total, well, if there is a total eclipse, 
Oh uh, yeah, we can't say that the center is covered. I don't... Well, let's see, is that true? Uh, that might not be true. If there's a total eclipse on the planet, w it might be um, that the center is necessarily eclipsed because it is like half the planet has to be eclipsed at least. So let's, let's go ahead and say that too. Um, but the, the, the converse isn't true. So it's not sufficient uh, to find whether the center is eclipsed or not. It is uh, maybe a necessary condition. And again, it's a, there's a difference between partial and total eclipses. So we're going to have one solve this problem is by ignoring it. And the way we're going to ignore it is um, I've already written a program that tests to see whether the center of, in this case, I think it's just IO, but that's not going to be an issue. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to compare that, um, my results, to the well-known correct results, which we found earlier, um, which are down here somewhere. Um, and by the way, a lot of the stuff here is uh, just garbage that I was going to, uh, there's another question I'd like to answer about the Zodiac, but we're not going to be doing it right now. Um, and then there's a, a whole section here of things that are not going to be on future streams that might be on future streams um, as part of my just everything negation policy. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to run this program, and I, I think it's, it, I might need to tweak some of the, the, um, the parameters and see when it predicts Io will be eclipsed and compare that to the well-known correct answer. And that way, if that works, we can know that whoever's making these predictions, uh, and we'll test it with Ganymede, Callisto, and so forth. There's only like two months worth of predictions, so it should not be, and we're only going to look at a few of them, so it should not be a huge deal to, t to check these. Um, so we're going to be looking at that, and then we're going to, um, and if that looks okay, if th that gives the same answers I do, we know that whoever's writing up, th whoever's computing that, and I think it is NASA or someone fairly high up and important that you can trust, we're going to say that, yeah, you know, we could probably just ignore the fact that you're not at the center of the planet but on the surface. Uh, but then we're going to do something else, too. I mean, we don't know if that's true for Metis. I don't know if anyone calculates uh, Metis eclipses. Um, and, the, and the question actually is only asking for about how long uh, Metis is eclipsed, you know, by, by Jupiter. When I did the calculation for Pluto and Charon, it turns out if you're on Pluto, Charon is 240 times the size of the Sun, and if you're in a position, because uh, it's tightly locked, if you're in a position where Charon, the entire Moon is visible, the Sun spends about one-third of the Plutonian day behind, behind Charon. Um, so, so, you know, maybe that's just what we're looking for here. Metis is the closest um, is the closest uh, moon to Jupiter, I believe, at least according to the OP. Um, so we can, uh, so that, you know, we might have a similar effect where it's, it, and the, the answer that's already given strongly suggests, okay, I'm getting plus points for, yay, um, bizarrely. Um, and uh, let's see, um, and I think the comment to one of the answers already given, and again, we are answering the question, it's already answered, 16% of its time fully in shadow. So. So we're, you know, he's probably looking more, he or she's probably, uh, we're going to use he again, uh, default pronoun. Um, he's probably looking for just a percentage, but, you know, if we can compute this, this is nice. We, we might, at some point, find it interesting, we can, and, and if we generalize the concept, we're, we're really happy. Um, so after all that, we are going to do something. We're going to check to see, um, there's two things that are different if you're on the surface as opposed to the center of a planet. One is the angular radiuses of the two objects, the both the eclipsing and the eclipsed, are going to be larger. If you're, it, well, if you're right on the, you know, if you're right on over them, if you're where they're right overhead, they will be bigger. They will have larger angular radiuses at the sides of the planet. I don't really know. I think they will be smaller, but there's that change in angular radius. Uh, so we'll mention that. And the other issue here is a parallax, the position of uh, of a given object depends on where on the surface you are. Um, and that's, that can be called parallax because depending on where you view it, it has, it's in a different position against A, the fixed stars, and B, the object that's generating the light, usually the sun. Um, on Earth, that's a huge deal because the moon's parallax is something like one degree. So if you're viewing the moon overhead versus when it's rising or setting on opposite sides of the world, uh, you will uh, say the moon is in a different position in the sky compared to the, the fixed stars. Uh, the sun also has a parallax, but it's much smaller. Uh, and, that is, and, uh, and that's why you, know, you could see a, a solar eclipse from some points on the Earth, but not others. That's one of the reasons. Um, and you know, that's, why, that's, why, that's why eclipse computations on Earth are pretty difficult. Now, it's possible, uh, because I did show another uh, answer, which I'm not going to be able to find. 
that the Earth and the, uh, and the, you know, the Sun and the Moon have about the same angular radius from Earth, but that's almost unique in our solar system. And generally, the moons are either have a much larger angular radius or a much smaller angular radius. So the question of, you know, total, partial, partial on part of the Earth, total on some, those questions don't normally arise. Uh, and so that is not, that's not a huge issue anywhere else. Uh, you know, unless we find something, a new moon or something, but, uh, you know, that, that's not really a huge issue except for on Earth. So um, I'm hoping to show, if, if this all goes according to plan, that the angular radius and the parallax changes for most of the computations we do are so small that it, it, you can just pretend you're at the center and get a very, get an answer that's essentially accurate. Okay, and one more thing we're going to do before we do all this, of course, is we'd like to have fun. Not on the stream, just in general. Uh, I don't know Stellarium lets you view from Metis, but this will give us sort of a sort of a bird's eye view, so to if there are birds on Metis, of of what we're talking about, how big Jupiter really is, you know, in in visual terms. Uh, we will be able to get that in other terms. I don't know if Metis, unfortunately, is one of the locations you can you can look for from. So let's see if it is. I think these are in alphabetical order. Um, oh, wow, it is. Okay, so awesome. Metis. And we're going to look sort of from what we... I'm pretty sure this is our moon, not Metis, but anyway. Um, and the weird thing here is that it actually keeps the United States as the country, but obviously we're going to look from, roughly speaking, the you know the point where uh, the prime meridian of Mer Metis intersects the equator of Metis, both of which actually have definitions, but it's, it's fairly complicated to, to figure that out. Um, as it turns out. Now, as we can see, this big sucker here is Jupiter, and um, based on this crescent, we believe the sun is going to be to the right. Hey, and there we are. Uh, as you can see, the sun is much, much bigger. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Sorry, the, the, the program. I can't make it full screen because it doesn't work with... It's, it's bad. Badness things happen. Okay, but we can make it bigger than this. Okay, so... Um, you can see that Jupiter is quite a bit bigger than the sun. In fact, we can probably tell you how big it is. Um, parallax, that's not, that might be important to us later. But does it tell us what the um, angular magnitude is? It does not. I think there is, there's a way to get the angular width here. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. I want to look at freak. Seriously? I love it. I can't quite, there we go. Jupiter is what I want to freaking look at. Uh, magnitude minus 18.67. That's really, really bright. In fact, that might be... No, still not as bright as the sun. But pretty darn bright. Come on. Seriously, I can't click on Jupiter. Ah! There we go. Um, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if full Jupiter is brighter than the sun, which should be impossible, maybe, because... Well, I mean, because the sun is the source of Jupiter's light. It's mostly reflected. But we'll figure this something out here soon. Okay. Um... Apparent diameter here is, holy crap, 57, not, not minutes, degrees, 57 degrees. This is a, this takes up a huge chunk of space on Metis because it is so large. Um, so now, I'm going to go ahead and see if we can zoom out the, um, I don't want to zoom out too much. There is a limit to how much you can zoom this out, but if you zoom it out too much, you end up with stuff like this, which is not super helpful. I'm also going to go ahead here to the constellations. We don't really need them here. Because uh, we're not really, we're really more interested in the, the sun. And by the way, there's a, there's fun for Callisto and stuff. Let's go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and watch Jupiter through an orbit. We will, uh, speed up time a little bit. In Stellarium, not in real life. Okay, so, okay, wait, 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 wait. We need to stick with Jupiter. So you can see Jupiter actually gets pretty bright here, 20 point, um, it actually would act almost like a second sun. Now it's getting dimmer because it's we had full Jupiter at 21. Still dimmer than the sun, which makes sense. I'm going to slow this down a little bit as we watch. Um, we're going to watch for... And again, this is only at one point on Metis. So, so um, oh wow. And we're still going pretty fast. Hang on. Okay. This is only at one point on, on Metis. The, you know, got, but I mean, if you see how huge Jupiter is, it's probably going to be pretty similar on the rest of Metis. So let's go ahead and uh, quickly, uh, when I say quickly, 
Okay, so we're, you know, um, so 0221 on December 22nd, our time. It starts, and then it's going to cover the sun pretty quickly, I think. Yeah, not, not, it doesn't take that long to cover the sun. So from 221 to about, yeah, just a, within a minute, the sun is covered. And then the sun goes totally dark for quite a bit of time. Let's see how long that is. Okay, so that was about an hour and uh, 54 minutes, I think. Uh, that was very rough. We're going to make better calculations here. And then three, four, five. Um, so it looks like it's going to be about two out of every ten hours, very roughly speaking. Because now we're going back into the phase where Jupiter is becoming new. Huge eclipse of the moon there. Okay, so that was fun, um, and it gives us some idea, it ballparks the idea of where, uh, what our answer is going to look like. Um, an interesting question that was asked by someone else, because I really don't want to, because I'm really too lazy to program at, the, at this exact instant, but it'll change in like five minutes, uh, is whether or not the other moons of Jupiter can actually eclipse the sun, and, and they can, I think, but um, let's see if we can, let's see what happens if, we, if, if they actually do. Wow. So Ganymede, okay, there's Amalthea. Ganymede's going to come in too far to the north. There's Jupiter. And of course, they're going to be sort of close to Jupiter because they, they orbit Jupiter. Um, and there's our planet, the Earth. And there's a, okay, so this isn't particularly useful. Yay, Earth. Oh, wow, we're actually quite visible from Meta. So 0.8 magnitude, we're one of the brighter things in the sky. Uh, and we're not quite as bright as Venus, but, but close. Okay, that's enough of that. All right, so now let's go back and look at the, um, let's go back and look at the program that I wrote. I think it's called, uh, it's probably not called BC Jovian um, Eclipses because I like to name things in a way that I can never find them again. So let's see what I did name it. Fortunately, I do know it's recent, so I can use LS LAT to do this. Um, BC Zodiac, that's, I'm almost sure something different. Uh, obscurations, yeah, that, there's a name that I would never have remembered in a thousand years. So I think I've changed it a little bit. I wanted to make it more uh, to do, don't treat, observe a single point. I think, and by the way, you'll see ellipsoid, ellipsoid here. That is not the observer. That is the eclipsing body and the eclipsed body. One is eclipsing, one is eclipsed. So we do treat those as ellipsoids, but the observer we treat as a single point, which is um, a limitation, maybe, of, of, uh, of sea spice. Now, oh, okay, so we actually have, it's pretty nice here, we have observer, obscured object, obscure ring object, start year and end year. Well, that's gorgeous. That is just gorgeous, as John Lithgow would say in uh, Third Rock from the Sun. So now let's go ahead and uh, refine. We already have it, so uh, we can uh, just get this up real quick. The list of actual known um, uh, Jupiter almanac, observing Jupiter almanac. And by the way, we might merge our answer to the other question that we were answering into this one. We, we might sort of combine them in a way and just say, uh, and then have just, you know, answer one of them and point to the other answer. And, okay, so Jupiter Almanac, let's take a look here. And I think I actually already downloaded this, so I'm probably going to feel bad about doing this. Okay. So we're looking at 2018, and this gives all four moons, so we can... Uh, Let's see, if our times aren't even close, it's dangerous. If they're, the expectation here is they're going to be a little bit close. Um, so let's go ahead and go into today's, um, you know, I always create a separate directory for each day for a little bit of work we're doing. I don't know why I do that. That's probably stupid. Um, and we're going to say BC Obscuration, and I hope, yes. I have it set so if, we, if you don't give it the right arguments, it tells you what arguments it, it wants. So the observer here is going to be um, uh, the observer here is going to be a Metis. No, no, sorry, Io. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, we're doing Io right now. Um, so the observer is going to be on Io. The thing being obscured um, uh, is the sun, and the thing that is doing the obscuring is Jupiter, which is happen to know these. And we're going to go from 2018 to, two th and this is going to come in, oh, I hate my life, okay, 
for some bizarre reason, I have to call this Jupiter. And I probably should just go ahead and call this Io then, and I should call this the Sun. And at some point, I need to fix the, um, I'll make note. Fix documentation of, uh, uh, to indicate you need names, not numbers, but figure out whole I IAU frame numbering scheme issue. And that is, um, I don't, it just seems like you should have an IAU 599 to, to refer to Jupiter, but you don't. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do that now and uh, run it correctly. And yes. And what's brilliant here, of course, is these times are completely unreadable. Um, uh, and I probably could use date minus D on them, which I will do just really quickly to see if we have something. But I'm also going to uh, clean up the way we print these times. That's not hard. So 1317 GMT, Moon 1, ooh, 1407 GMT. And then it comes out of uh, eclipsing, that's occultation. Yeah, maybe I should save this table to something. And it comes out of eclipsing... D and then there should be an ek, you know, stopping D. Mm. Oh, actually, there might be a different name for that. Um, disappears and reappears. So this is reappear. Oh, sorry, we're not looking at IO. IO. This is uh, it disappears at 1407. And see, this is a different kind of event. Though this is an occultation of the satellite behind Jupiter. That's as observed from Earth. We don't really care about that. We want to know when it leaves the shadow. And I'm trying to figure out what that what that event is called. Um, ca <laughs> casting its tiny black shadow onto Jupiter. Th that's correct. Jupiter is huge. So when a, uh, when a planet transits it, uh, it does cast its tiny black shadow, but I just found that that uh, I'm using. And these guys, these guys know how to, how to, how to say stuff. Okay, so what we're looking for is when IO reemerges, and according to this, IO reemerges. According to me, it reemerges. No, that was really bad. And again, if I were doing serious work here, I would, I would save the result instead of reprinting them each time. But it's really, really fast for one year or so. And this is again the kind of thing you would not get away with uh, back when I started programming. So according to this, 1317 to 1527, um, oh, so 1317, but that's the wrong moon, to 1527, hmm. wow, and it looks like for both of these we're getting two, but two is Europa, not Io. Um, and what's sort of bad here is we're not seeing the this eclipse. Well, you know what? Now that I think about it, um, that was not a great idea. Let's see if I can do space I eclipse. Okay, good. So now we should see it reemerge somewhere, sometime, eventually. Or this table is bunkum, but it's from um, it's from Sky and Telescope, so it should be fairly reliable. Um, yeah, that's not useful at all. Okay. And let's make sure we're in the right year, 2018, yeah. Let's make sure we're in the right year here, yep, so 2018. I'm sure they're using GMT, UTC or whatever, I mean, close to GMT. Um, so 1407 is the, the time it disappears in Jupiter's shadow. Uh, and so the OC, in addition to being a name for Orange County, the occultation of a satellite behind Jupiter's limb, okay, uh, eclipse, transit, satellite <laughs> casting its shadow. Um, and call occultation or eclipse begins when the satellite disappears and when it reappears. Um, okay, that's great. So when does this thing reappear? It disappears, then it disappears again, and I don't... Uh, 
So I'm not happy with this. Um, now once again, we're going to bring up our friend Stellarium. In fact, I probably shouldn't have even bothered to shut him down. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take a view from um, IO and see what time, uh, beginning of 2018, and see what uh, what times the you know the total solar, the partial and the total solar eclipse start on IO. Uh, the only problem here is um, we can only observe from one location on IO, and we're actually sort of interested in the whole planet, but we can deal with that because um, and that's not what I meant to do. I meant to look at this. IO, there we are. And we'll go ahead and put a sort of center of IO, so to speak. All right, and we're going to set our time to 2018.01. Come on, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, nope, not 2017, 2018. And we're going to stop the clock here in just a sec so we don't have this silliness going on. All right, so now we want to look at the sun from here, and I'm hoping that, um, again, the, um, come on, the sun. Okay. And we're going to look to see, uh, w again, this is a, this is a, uh, you know, if then, con this is a uh, one directional condition. If, um, I was not eclipsed from where we're looking. It's not eclipsed across the whole, all of Iowa, obviously. If it is eclipsed from here, that doesn't mean it's eclipsed from everywhere. But I think we can deal with that. Because Jupiter should be actually pretty big. So let's zoom up our time a little bit, a little bit more. And here comes Jupiter Claws. Right down Jupiter Claws. Okay, this is, uh... <laughs> oh, man! I think that's the leading edge of Jupiter. Let's let's make sure. Okay, I don't know what that is actually. That might be because even though I have ground and horizon turned off, this is like an artifact. But anyway, let's keep going here. Uh, here come Europe and Amalthea. Jupiter. So we're already seeing sort of a problem. No, no, maybe we're not. No, no. Sorry, it's only been six hours. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit on Mr. Sun. I'm tempted to speed up time, but this just looks so gorgeous. And we are... Okay. And we're not quite at first contact here, but we need to slow things down a little bit. Okay, and you'll notice that first con roughly is thirteen seventeen, which I think is either our time or their time. Um, one of us got that right, and you'll notice that Jupiter's so big that once the sun is behind it at this point, a little bit beyond that point, it'll be behind it for every point. So thirteen seventeen. Let's see who has that time. Who had thirteen seventeen in the big big bingo number? Uh, okay. Okay. So this may be an issue here. What does this SH1 mean? They're casting its like shadow onto Jupiter, but why is... Oh, I. I is... Uh, this is a not... This is not Io. This is ingress and egress. So... Okay. So according to this, we still don't have the one till 1407. We don't have an eclipse. And it's possible that just because somewhere on Io we're... That actually seems like a long time afterwards, though. And there's one other thing I think we need to deal with here. Because our actual observer is on Earth, where we live, um, we might actually need to compensate for light time. Because this is what would happen if you're on, on Io. But on Earth, this will take about four hours to get here. Or maybe an hour doesn't seem like long enough. But OK. So I'm going to go ahead and freeze time here. Um, let me make sure that, you know, Jupiter's eclipsing pretty much all of Io at this point, and I can pretty much guarantee you that's the case. And if I'm doing this right, we shouldn't even have to, um... Okay, not in the Netherlands. That was, like, way off. Uh, let's go back to Io. We just jumped through space. Okay. If I'm doing this correctly, it actually should be updating instantly. Let's see if it actually is. So there... Yeah, it is. 
Okay, so you can see here. Oh uh oh. Uh, there's a position. Okay, what's going on here? I don't know what the hell where the hell that other light's coming from, but I would say that it's a pretty good it's a pretty good guess here that we are uh, we are totally eclipsed across the planet across the moon. Okay. So let's go back to the center here because I want to see something else here. So okay, so we are we are eclipsed across the moon here. Um. So it's quite possible here we're dealing with um. Boy, a lot of crap. Um, no, let's go back over here. Um, so we're saying 1407, and this it looks to us like it actually happened before 1407. Um, and let's see if we can... Uh, unfortunately, I think the problem here is going to be a little bit bigger than we anticipated. Okay, so it happens at 1317, if you happen to be roughly... If you happen to be on IO... Um, but they say 1407. Now the, the problem here is we can't even really observe this from Earth because uh, Jupiter will eclipse the moon, but that doesn't mean Jupiter's shadow is being cast on the moon. And those are two different things. So the problem here is, um, you know, we might say, okay, 1317, and I think that's the time I came up with. Um, Oh, it is. It's, ac it's actually really good. Um, I pat myself on the back there. Um, and let's see if it actually leaves at 1527, since we might as well test to see how good I am at this. La la. We'll speed up time a little bit here. Wow. Not bad. I, I pretty much nailed it. Um, unfortunately, I didn't nail it according to this uh, this chart here, uh, which uh, which is presumably accurate. So um, I'm unhappy. In fact, let's see, disappears and reappears. So let's let's see if we can find out where it is they think this thing ever reappears. Okay, so clearly, uh, According to them, Io doesn't reappear to that. I'm almost sure that's inaccurate. I'm almost, almost sure that's inaccurate. It's uh, possible that what's going on here is, um, it's possible what's going on here is that for some reason they don't, you know, say when Io is coming out of the shadow. Okay. So now the problem we have to deal with is why are these times different from my times? And I'm hoping it's something basic, but I think it's, I mean, the obvious answer is that since we're viewing these events from Earth, there is a light time delay. The problem with that is, um, I say 1317, they say 1407. That's a delay of about 50 minutes. Um, I forget how far away Jupiter is from us. I think it's more than 50 light minutes, though. Well, we can actually find out here. It will actually tell us. Oh, no, this will tell us how far it is from Io because, again, we're, we're sort of on Io. Okay. So let's m ask Mr. Google, and of course the distance varies based on, uh, you know, where we are and where Jupiter is, but I mean, roughly speaking. Um, distance, or distance, to Jupiter in light minutes. Ooh, 35 to 52 minutes, so this could very easily be, uh, the difference we're seeing here could very easily be the fact that um, we're observing from Earth and not from, uh, not from Io. So this actually adds a sort of a wrinkle, which we'll need to mention here in our answer. Um, am I using this as my notes as well, or do I have a separate notes thing? Okay, I do have a separate notes thing, but it has nothing to do with this. Okay. Um, mention Stellarium, which I think I already said I was going to mention. Yes. Um, light travel time. Um, so, let's see. What's interesting here is my mismatch. And we're going to test a couple more values before we give this full answer here. Um, so, what's interesting here is both questions actually asked for an observer who was on Jupiter or, you know, on Metis, very close to Jupiter. So, the light travel time is not an issue for them. 
Um, but if you're observing from Earth, it is an issue. So we need to mention that but it, because the times are going to disagree on the table from the ones I come up with. But we are also going to mention, um, I guess, that it doesn't matter if you're viewing from Io because you won't have that light travel time. So that was just one. So now I'm sort of unhappy because I can't get m answers that match all the way. But, 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 let's... Um, and I guess the problem here is if I'm going to do this, um, and I'm trying to test to see whether we're getting minute accuracy, I can't really do that because um, because I would have to compute the distance to Earth uh, and you know add or add that time in, uh, and that I'm not really sure I want to do that because my program, the way it is right now, is actually pretty good in terms of telling how you get that um, how you get the uh, the uh, how you compute these things. Uh, I mean, I could add a, uh, an issue for, you know, um, uh, I mean, I could add, like, a, another parameter to say, add light distance time from obscured object to, er, to this object. But that is too complicated, and it doesn't really help us that much. Um, so we're just going to sort of randomly sort these and, and check one. <laughs> And check a few of them. And again, again, I should really, really, really be putting these in a file, not recomputing them every time. Uh, and I really, really, and I actually do sort of care because it is inefficient. But you know, whatever. So we got another one going on Sunday, June 23rd at 23:48 to Sunday, June 24th at 0200. And, and hopefully this time the table will get it right. Okay. And the table, uh, we need to point out the table error um, for I/O disappears, doesn't reappear very unrealistic. So we're going to be annoyed by that. And I guess if the reappearance occurs at about 15.30, so give or take, you know, Jupiter hasn't moved that much, this will be about 16.10 in the, uh, in, the, in the PDF. If I can find the PDF. Hey, where'd the PDF go? Oh, it's in my browser, I keep forgetting. Hmm. Or did I close it by mistake? It's not good. All right, let's see if I can. I think this is actually it. It just has a funny name. Okay, so we said um, fourteen oh seven is when we said fifteen thirty is when we said three appears. Let's see if there's anything that deals with I/O at that rough time give or take 40 minutes. So the closest thing we have here, and I don't think that's it. So I am going to say I think this, oh, should I actually bug Sky and Telescope Magazine and say you are idiots? Okay. And the problem is not just that my calculations disagree, but they have IO disappearing uh, and not reappearing for four months, and we know that's not correct. We know that doesn't that Io sort of loops around Jupiter every few days. Not certainly not four months. Um, okay, so we will go ahead and bug Sky and Telescope. We might write that message on stream, or we might write that message off stream. I haven't decided yet. And when I say we, I mean me. Okay, so now we're going to ask the um, the question is well, we can compute this for me this easily, um, and we can compute it for any amount of time. Um, and Io and Ganymede and Callisto and all that good stuff. So we did not succeed in our first mission of trying to correlate these times to the times officially published, partly because there's a light time delay and partly because it looks like the freaking times that are published are just just wrong, basically. I'm very sad about that. Uh, and we sort of verified that by looking at Stellarium and saying, look, here's when this part of Io goes into eclipse, here's where, and, you know, th and Jupiter's so big that by the time you get over here, Parallax isn't going to be an issue for you. Um, so now let's actually make some calculations. Um, and do I want to use Mathix for this? Uh, uh, let's see. Well, we, we might dig into, right now we're just going to use this file. We, we might want to dig into Mathix real quick. Um, so the first question is, um, how much does your angular radius change? Uh, change in angular radius, uh, depending on where you are on the planet. Um, okay, and we're okay. We got to be careful here. I think we do want to go into uh, not necessarily mathics. 
Uh, but we need we need to go into mathics because we want to sort of refer to these. Um, we, we have the we already have the definition of various different uh, either the planets Q R S R all that stuff. And I'm going to see where we. Oh, I can't even do that. I have to do. This is uh, again part of my very helpful. Uh, always make things confusing. Um, I think it's an eclipse portions. And I forget if it's in eclipse portions or not. Um, no, I don't think that actually I think that's incorrect. Uh, because we need um, diagram. I think that's where we ended up putting all of these things. Whoa. Reread from this? You betcha. That's, that's a big change there. Uh, let's see. Right, we said SX and uh, S, E, and M, referring to the Earth, Moon, and the Sun. And I, I, and yes, we did. We, we actually were pretty consistent with that. Okay. And then we started to change our minds by saying that S, T, and Q be any three spherical objects says that S and S is potentially eclipsed on Q by T. Um, so we did this, we did this, we went through all of this stuff. Okay. And I'm not really sure I want to, um, yeah, I think what we can do is we can steal this, uh, estimates is, um, and I think I use this for two dimensions. So let's, let's go ahead and we're going to copy this over and we're going to actually be a little bit more specific about what we're talking about here. And we're going to go back into three dimensions. BC Eclipse, we'll call it Mechanics because that's vague enough that it doesn't mean anything. Um, and yet it, it hints enough at it that if people can't really complain about it, but they don't like it, which is the, the standard of, uh, of offending people. Okay, so let's see what we're doing here. And this is still a pretty good definition. Um, in the below, and we're going to go ahead and SR, TR, and QR refer to the radii of the spheres, and it's obvious which one is which. And uh, SX, SY, do I want to say that? The radii, so blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see. Have I made this? No. By using R, I'm I'm good because I haven't I don't have an object named R. So um, S T S Q and T Q are the distances between the centers of the spheres. Good stuff. And that's probably how we're going to end up doing this. Um, and is that enough for us to compute the differences in angular? I think it is actually. Um, I'm going to keep this little, this cruft here, which says that we could put them all on a plane. I don't think we're going to need it, though. Um, okay, so the angular radius change, and we can be, um, we're going to call it the uh, angular radian delta, uh, given, uh, let's see, be a little bit careful here. The distance to something and its radius uh, is going to be, and boy, we worked this out in some detail earlier. Let's see if we can copy some of our other formulas that talk about angular, uh, angular radius or whatever, angular separation. Um, oh boy, there's a lot of stuff here. That's the formula of a line, view line, don't care, line, angular radius. So we're going to put that here, and we'll talk about that later. Let's see what else we can sneak in from here. Point, theta, no, vector to theta. Mm. Well, these are two-dimensional, so we're going to ignore them for right now. Uh, the uh, the angle radius to t is going to be the arc sine. Okay, that that's just arc ang rad. Um, the angular separation is actually um, 
is actually what we're looking for, which is different from the angular radius. Um, and I guess we're going to measure angular separation using um, their centers and then subtract off the radii. Although now it occurs to me that there might be a better way of doing that entirely and actually measure the distance between the two, uh, you know, how f the closest approach is how far do they get from each other. Um, and I think that's going to be the same thing as measuring the distance from their radii and then subtracting off the, the angular uh, radius. Um, but I am, I'm sort of curious to see if that would be, uh, if there's a way to get that that doesn't involve subtraction and just we could look at the distance between the two edges of the spheres. And I'm going to put that as a to do, so I'm going to put that as a doing somewhere. Um, can we directly calculate distance between sphere edges? And I'm going to say angular distance. Uh, without going through uh, distance between centers subtracting off angular radii, which mean and I'm going to screw myself here. 100% accurate. And I forget if let's see if that actually got through. Yes, we did. Because the percentage, some special characters throw it off, but the percentage is obviously not one of them. Okay, so the angular separation um, between two objects is oh boy, I don't even know if those are. I mean, it's the norm of the vectors that are connecting them. Um, Okay, is there a formula for angular separation that doesn't depend on, um, that we can use that doesn't necessarily depend on, um, on, yeah, I think there is actually, let's see, um, so the angular separation is going to be, um, the radius Oh, the angular separation should be actually pretty easy if we know the positions, but we're, we're trying to avoid knowing the positions. We are going to know just the uh, position, the distances to the two planets and the distance between them. Um, and I'm wondering if that is enough information to tell us what the angular separation is. Um, and it might be, but I don't know if that's, that's, an, easy, that's an easy issue. So let's see. Well, let's cheat first and use Google, and then I think we can we can actually come up with this ourselves. And do I still have it so Google does not bring up a new window? Well, we'll just be careful here. Angular separation formula. And I think it's going to give me the one that I don't want. Uh, angular distance. Um, it's not what I want. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Um, not what I need, though. Uh, let's see, the angular... It seems like this would be really easy, right? It's the dot product of the two vectors. But I guess I'm trying to do it without knowing the two vectors directly, just knowing the distances. Um, uh, they're going to present it without proof, and I bet you it's going to be one that we don't really one we don't really want. Okay. Um, and I think we might need something like the law of cosines or something for this. Oh, is it the law of sine? I think we need the law of cosines for this. And before we get too caught up in this, let's see, why are we looking for this? We, um, uh, we're looking for this because we want to measure the change in the angular separation uh, when you're on the surface. And actually, I don't think we need that because we actually can measure the parallax. Yeah, instead of measuring the change in angular separation, we'll measure the parallax for both. Um, so the change in angular separation, I guess, is going to be more limited than the uh, than the um, than the parallax because the, the shift will occur in the same direction for both uh, both objects. So the parallax is hopefully easy to compute. Uh, from radius and distance, um, the change in that angle is going to be 
trying to think what that's going to be. And that should just be the, um, the uh, let's see. Again, this is of the center. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, Milk Istromu is in chat. I almost got chat overlaid on uh, the, uh, the, uh, the broadcast working, but I did not. So hello, Milk Istromu. If you have any questions, comments, uh, anything you want, uh, let me know. We are trying to figure out um, how small the parallax and angular radius change is if you're on the surface of a planet as opposed to being in the center of the planet. And we are hoping to show that it is ignorably small. Um, and we're not being very successful right now. But, uh, but, the, uh, but that's what we're doing right now. And I think the actual the parallax is going to be the, um, the angular diameter of the planet as viewed from whatever it is you're measuring the parallax to. Um, let's see if I believe that. Uh, so the parallax angle is that angle, so it's going to be opposite over adjacent. Um, yeah, the parallax angle is just going to be the arc tan um, of the radius of the object over the... it's almost the same thing. Okay, so so far we're not doing a great job of this. Um, so, so what are we trying to say here? We're trying to say that it's going to be small uh, if we know the distances between the three objects um, and the radius of the, of the observer. So the angular radius uh, can increase by as much as QR, the QR being the observer. So the angular radius is going to be R over D. And actually, that's not correct. That's going to be pretty sure that's the, oh, it's the angular radius, the diameter is twice that. Um, so what changes here is you go from the angular radius of R from a distance of QR minus the angular radius from a distance of R, no, I'm sorry, um, the distance between Q and, so it would be like SQ, the distance between S and Q, to the distance between S and Q, but minus the, the radius of QR, because you're going to be right on top of them. So that's that's what that's going to be. I don't think that's a very interesting quantity. I don't know if that can even be, um, there's a simplification for that, but let's see. And I'm going to be lazy, PC Eclipse Mechanics. I'm hoping that this is written well enough that it doesn't crash. Okay, angular radius, and so what we want is this angular change in angular radius, which might be totally useless to us. Yeah, I don't think that simplifies actually. And I'm, d yeah, I don't think it simplifies at all. Okay, so that would just be something we compute. Um, so I think what we can do here is we can add an output uh, to our obscuration program that tells you. Uh, you know how much of an error we are we are getting by by estimating uh, by using the center of the planet instead of the the planet's um, instead of the surface of the planet. Um, I'm trying not to lose sight of what we're doing here. Uh, and the other option is um, if we're only looking for total eclipses, and um, we know the center we know the center must be eclipsed. Uh, and if the center is eclipsed and the two points that are 90 degrees sort of tangent to the pointing vector of uh, the, uh, you know, the sun, the, the, the object that causes the light, if we can show that there's also an eclipse on those two points, I think that is sufficient to show that the, the entire planet is eclipsed, the half of the planet that is, that is lit up by the, uh, the, by the lighting object. Um, so there's that also. So I'm trying to see if, um, you know, we can, we can do both, of course. Um, so let's go ahead and, um, and, and, and the issue again is we know it has an effect on Earth. We know it has a big effect on Earth. So, um, so that's, 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 that's why we are sort of worried about it. Uh, and we also know the Earth can never be fully eclipsed by the, uh, the sun can never be fully eclipsed on Earth by the moon. It's too small. So, uh, so we, we know that for that we're just talking about partial eclipses. So I guess, and we sort of straight off off topic here. Let me see what our plan was. We've, we've sort of gotten 
away from this. We were going to do tests for the different ones, and I, it's close, but we can't really, without counting like travel time, we can't really uh, we can't really give an accurate answer there. Um, and I guess no, yeah, we, yeah. Um, and so I guess we're just going to look at the the angular radius of the two objects, the change that would occur if you were uh, if you were on uh, the surface as opposed to on the uh, on the um, on the center. Um, and I'm going to sort of let's see. And then we are going to consider I mentioned the 90 degree vector approach, which I actually sort of uh, I sort of like. Um, so I'm kind of I'm kind of not sure how to continue here because um, there's more than one option. Uh, and by the way, at some point I do want to answer this other question, which is totally unrelated, uh, but is still interesting because it's very deeply related to the Chinese count the Asian calendars. Uh, and you know, I also want to mention you can use horizons, and there's all sorts of good things you can use for this uh, zodiac stuff. Um, so let me see how long I've been streaming. That is a way of saying I might want to stop streaming. And according to this, I've been streaming for oh, wow, a lame 56 minutes. So um, that's not good. Uh, let me ask my uh, viewers if there are any. And there is one. Hello. Um, how would you, the viewer, like me to continue? And if you're busy or you've left, you know, we'll give it about a minute, and then uh, if there's no, um, actually, I'm probably going to have to, never mind, ignore that question. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop streaming now. Uh, the, when we come back, we're going to maybe add both of these features or one of these features to the obscuration program, and that will make it more specific to total eclipses, so we've got to be careful here, because if we still want to measure partial eclipses, we, we will use something, you know, we will still need to deal with that situation, which is which is different from a full uh, full total eclipse. All right, thank you for watching the stream and goodbye for now.